Okay guys, welcome to this video where I will be running through creating the pixel portrait for assessment one for visual communication. We're going to be working on this in Photoshop and there are many ways that you can do this in Photoshop but I will show you one way. So here we have my image which I will be working on as my portrait and you can see in the layers palette that it is called a background layer. Now we need to be able to work with this layer so the best thing to do is to double click on it and we're going to call it a name such as portrait and call it OK. After that we then need to create another layer. Now the way that layers work in Photoshop is kind of like layers of transparency or perspex and each one can contain different parts of your artwork. It's a really good way to be organized with your artwork is to make sure that different elements are on different layers. So we're going to start with the first part of our pixel portrait by creating the horizontal arms of our grid. So we're going to call this layer horizontal and make sure that we're working on the layer by clicking on it to create horizontal. Now to draw the grid we need to do this by hand. You can't actually generate a grid made of pixels which is what we need to work with. Um, we can't do that automatically. We can generate a grid that we can see as a guide and we'll do that in just a second but in order to create the grid that we need for today's purpose we have to create it ourselves by hand. So the first thing we need to do is to line it up with something. So make sure that you go into your view menu and if we go into show you can see that grid is one of the options. The shortcut for grid is command inverted comma apostrophe command apostrophe and you can toggle the grid on and off by clicking that. So the command apostrophe which is next to the enter or return button on off on off there's our grid. To set up your grid as a one centimeter grid you do that in your Photoshop preferences. You go up to preferences and where you see guides grid and slices you click on that and here in the grid section we can see that you can choose the color the style we want lines and we'd like every grid line to be one centimeter. We don't need subdivisions because we're not going to be breaking that up into anything smaller. Once you're happy with that click OK and there's our grid. It is a guide only. It doesn't actually exist and would not print if you tried to. So the first thing we need to do is to draw the horizontal bars of our grid. We can do this with either the pen tool in our toolbar or the line tool. I'm going to use the line tool because it's nice and straight. Now we can just start drawing randomly or we can make sure that when we're up in our view we go down to snap and make sure that snap is ticked. When we scroll below that it says snap to and we make sure grid is ticked as well. This means that our lines will snap to the grid and our measurements will be exact. So we start on one side of the canvas, position your mouse or your cursor, click your mouse and drag to the right. If I drag up and down it will of course do that. So to keep it straight if I then whilst I'm dragging hold down the shift key it will not move. So I'm holding down the shift key while I do that. Now make sure that you release the mouse button so unclick and then you can release your shift key. You can then draw all of your grid lines that way if you like or you can select and copy and paste. To copy and paste you use the black arrow tool which is just under the text tool. So we can draw those each by hand if we want to or we can click and drag a copy of that. Position your black arrow tool over the top of the line and if I hold down or press down the option key or the alt key and pressing down letting go, pressing down letting go, I can see a little plus symbol. This means it will make another one. Hold down the option key, click with your mouse and drag downwards and it will snap into place. Let go of your mouse, let go of your option key. You can continue to do that. So option key, click, drag, snap. Let go, let go of your option key. Option key, so position the, mouse, the cursor over the top. Option key, you get your plus symbol, click, drag, let go of your mouse, let go of your option key. Keep doing that, it's nice and easy. Do, 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 do. I'll just continue 
I won't do all of them, but you get the idea. So we just keep doing that. You then need to move on to your next layer, which will be your vertical lines. And it's the same process again. Vertical. Make sure you're working on the vertical layer when you start creating. Select your line tool. Roughly position your cursor because the snap tool will help correct that. And as I said, if I move my cursor around, it will swing the line around. Hold down the shift key and it will snap into place like that. Stop dragging, let go of the mouse, let go of the shift and go and choose your black cursor, your black arrow tool. Hold down the option key for the plus symbol, click with your mouse and drag to the right and it will snap into place. Let go of your mouse, let go of your option key. Hold down the option key, click with your mouse, drag to the right and so on and so forth. Option, click option click drag shouldn't take too long and now if I go and turn off my grid so there we can see the grid and the shortcut being command apostrophe I'm going to turn that off and we can see the grid lines that we've drawn I can turn off my image we can see there's the grid there and it's made of a, a line of pixels so it's one pixel wide we're going to use this to develop our grid we can see that our vertical and horizontal shape layers have been created. Now we need to flatten those into our grid. So if you imagine that that grid has been drawn, we now need to merge down our vertical onto our horizontal layer. The reason is that we need the grid to work together, both horizontal and vertical lines. So if I right click on that top layer, we can see rasterize layer. That's the first thing we need to do. We need to make sure that our smart shapes that we've drawn turn into pixels. You saw that change. I just clicked on rasterize. Right click on that horizontal layer, rasterize layer. And then we go back to our vertical. <coughs> Excuse me. Right click on it. So we get options and select merge down. We can now rename this as our grid. And if we toggle the eye on and off, you can see that those lines are all working together. We imagine that that grid is there. Now the first thing we'll do is to lock our portrait layer. So we can do that a number of ways. We select it and then lock like that. And it means that it won't move around or do anything else. Our grid, we need to stay active. And we're going to create a new layer, which is where your coloured pixels will go your, for your pixel portrait. Let's call this our pixels. They're not really pixels but this is what we'll call them for now. So our coloured squares will be on this layer and our grid will remain on that layer. If you paint onto the grid it just means that when you throw the grid away you'll also throw away your painting. So let's try and paint only on our pixel layer and leave our grid layer alone. So now to create the interesting part. We can use a few tools now to generate what we need. We're going to use the eyedropper tool to find our colour and we're going to fill each square. So select our portrait, use your eyedropper tool and we'll start with an easy square. Let's pick this one and if I use the eyedropper tool and just click in the middle you can see in the picker down here that that colour, doesn't matter where I go on the canvas, it actually will find a kind of general mean colour, average colour that suits wherever you're clicking. So up here in the corner it's nice and easy, it's obviously grey and we're going to fill that square with colour. Move on to your grids layer just by selecting it. Use your magic wand tool which means it will select a space of pixels and it chooses that square. You then go to edit, fill and it will fill with the foreground colour. You can see that there's options there, foreground, background, content aware, etc, etc. Let's just choose foreground colour because that was our basic median colour that we chose with the eyedropper tool and we click OK. It's really hard to tell whether we've actually done that successfully. So let's move down into another area where we can tell. <coughs> we deselect. Use your eyedropper tool to find a median colour. Let's go for some hair. So, <clears throat> excuse me, clicking somewhere in the hair there, we can see down in our 
color picker and it's averaging out a color which looks like that. Move around and it will change that color. Click, click, click until I'm happy. So I'm going to say that that's, that's an okay color there. Use your magic wand tool, select your square. So we're still on the grid layer. Move on to the pixel layer, edit and fill. Make sure foreground color is chosen and go OK. And we can see there that one of our squares has been filled. Deselect and move on. Now we can see that there's plenty of options of color in there <coughs> and it can get a little bit confusing. And this is where your creative problem solving will come in. So when we work, let's say, with this square here, I'm going to use the eyedropper to choose our color. You might pick a slightly darker color, which would be an average between the hair and the grey of the background behind her hair. It's up to you, whatever you'd like. And so we'll work with that. Go to your grid, <coughs> use your eyedropper tool to select your square, back to the pixels layer, edit, fill. Now of course you can use the shortcut, which is Shift F5. Make sure foreground colour is selected and OK and so on and so forth and if we continue on just make sure that you deselect each time and when we deselect we just make sure that we're going to be moving back to the grid to select our squares here we've got we're going to work with this square now here we've got mostly grey so I'm going to select my square I've done this in a slightly different order this time use the eyedropper tool to choose my colour and then edit Fill, foreground colour, make sure, oh, I didn't go onto the pixels layer. Make sure you're on your pixels layer to put your fill in, edit and fill, and then we drop the colour in on that pixels layer. What that means then is that all our squares that we're filling, like that, are all on one layer, and our grid is all on its own layer. Okay. So it's step by step. It is a little bit time consuming and it will take a little bit of your own creative uh, interpretation to work out what colour will get dropped into which area of pixels. It's up to you and this is what makes the challenge so interesting for the pixel portrait. But that's essentially how it works. When you get to the end, you'll be able to turn off the pixel, sorry, turn off the grid, turn off your portrait and you'll end up with something that looks like that. If you then save it as a JPEG, that will flatten so that the spaces in between your pixels will turn white. That's absolutely fine and it will look quite neat and tidy when you're finished. So that's how the pixel portrait works. I hope it makes sense and if you have any questions at all just send me a message through my class messages. Thank you very much.